All right. Probably one of the most requested ones I get for flip tips. Cascaner. So we're going to analyze Alfred Scott because he's really, really good at Cascaner. And this is probably one of the best ones, in my opinion, that he did. Um, so I think it's a very good one to watch. So the first thing I want to do is just watch it. Boom. Very, very good. Right? So, Cascaner, we have to understand. <clears throat> first of all, you need to know how to do a really good castaway. If you're trying to do Cascaner and you don't know how to do Castaway, you're wasting your time. Um, I truly, honestly believe that because you are either going to learn it really poorly um, by just making it work without a cast technique, um, or it's just going to take way longer. Learn a good Castaway first. Um, so, the most important part of that that you need to get is the cast technique, which is what casting is, which is the arching your back, the bending your knees, kicking them as straight as you can, as hard as you can to create a shape change from that big arch to that straight line to that big hollow. So you're going arch, create a lot of force, and then bring that force back into that hollow, right? And that is what creates your rotation. Because without that, you're not going to get much rotation. You'll see a lot of people that get away with cast scanners where they just lift up and then just drive their knees through. But you'll notice they rotate really slow or they get away with it because they have like the tiniest tuck ever. Um, but you don't want to do that. The other problem that creates for you is when you just drive your knees through, you can't create any distance from the wall for yourself. Um, so let's watch what Alfred does. It's right here. This is key. I want you to pay attention to two things. One, I want you to pay attention to his shape. Uh, and that shape change that we talked about, we talk about this a lot. Everything is a shape change, right? That's how you create momentum. But then I also want you to notice how long he stays on top of his hands. This is key. So arch, still pretty much directly on top of his hands. His weight's pretty balanced on his hands. Kick him straight, still pretty balanced on top of his hands. At this point, you need to be pushing away. Otherwise, you're just going to go straight to the wall. But basically, what I want you to notice is if you took a line from his mid-back, if you took this right here, this is going in the direction that he wants to go, right? If this was going straight up, right, he would hit the wall. If this was going straight this way, he'd go really far away from the wall and he'd have no height, right? So you need to find this balance of this angle right here. I can, you can basically watch and decide how close someone's going to be. If you're watching someone and, you, and you're watching, you can pause right here and basically predict how close they're going to be to the wall. Alfred's at this angle here where he's going to be safe but close, He's going to be safe but close because he's a little bit off. This would be like straight up, which is not so good, right? He's kind of here, right? He doesn't want to be straight out. He's, I guess, I guess he would say if you tr treated this like a square, he's at like 25 degrees-ish away, which is pretty darn perfect. It's, what you, it's a good balance of safety and rotation. Um, so now what I want you to watch is how he then takes the shape change that he did and brings it into the small shape by getting his lower body to be the part that's moving because in order to rotate you have two options you can either get your chest to go this way or you can get your hips to go this way but only one part of your body can be pulling at a time right and you're going to get because your hips are heavier uh, and because in this case they're moving a lot faster it's probably a smarter idea to use your hips to create the rotation rather than the chest a lot of people will just try to whip their chest back or pull their head they'll end up with less rotation uh, and their head will be closer to the wall. So I want you to watch how his hips start to carry through right here. His hips are carrying through that momentum. You'll also notice that he's almost fully tucked before he's even started descending from the top of the wall, right? Because he had that good angle right here. And you'll notice right now, right? He's basically here. He's, at, he's not close enough to hit his head, but he's pretty darn close because you need to be to get rotation. But that's because of the angle that his back was going, right? So then what you'll notice is once he gets into that tuck, the rotation starts, and he's still above the wall. I mean, it, with a cast scanner, this is about as good as it gets. If you're still rotating when you're above the wall, you're in good shape, unless you're too close, in which case you're not in good shape. Um, but see, right there. So not dangerously close, but close, right? And then that gives him time to even open up for the landing, which is really good, right? So boom, arch, snap. Right now, that right there, 90% of people can't do that well. And that's the reason why they can't cast really low, and that's the reason why they can't cast gainer, is that shape right there. It takes patience, which is the scariest part in this situation, because when you're doing a cast gainer or anything with head danger, it's really hard to forget about the head danger and focus on the movement and be patient and stay on your hands, because your brain's like, get away from the wall, get away from the wall. 
right? So learning to be patient, that's why castaway is important because castaway is a way to learn how to be patient with that casting motion without having the head danger. Um, but it takes patience. You have to arch, snap, pike, scoop, tuck, then you leave the wall. A lot of people will go arch, kick, leave the wall, right? And so what happens then is you created the momentum, that's great, but you've started falling while you're trying to tuck in. You'll notice Alfred doesn't start falling until basically after he's tucked in, right there. Now he pretty much starts falling, but he's already made up for the rotation deficit and it now only has to do a backflip like that. So when you're doing a cast gainer, that's probably the most important thing. I'd say the first thing you do is learn a really good castaway. Okay, learn a really good castaway, learn that casting technique. Then work on timers for a cast gainer where you find that back angle. So film yourself. Find what it feels like to get a back angle where you're going up, but not straight up, so you're not too close, but not going out and feeling yourself drop right away. And then it really just comes down to practicing that, practicing connecting those movements, right? Foam pit helps a lot because once you find that good set that's the right distance, you can start by just doing that set and then hoping and tucking and trusting it. Um, whereas if you're outside, you kind of have to just like whip it and hope that you'll, uh, you know, and hope that you'll, you'll make it. So it makes it a little harder to trust that set, uh, which you probably felt, you know, when you go for a skill for the first time, your set is usually crap because you're just trying to get it done. Your brain's like, oh my God, find the ground, get it done. Um, but yeah, that, that is the way I would go about it. Now, since this was request, requested by Riker, I am going to look at his cast gainer and we're gonna talk about his because it's really, 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 really good. But since it seemed like he was looking for tips, we will see if there's anything he could do to make it better. But dude, this kid is the future. I'm telling you, if you don't subscribe to Riker Vasallo on Instagram, do it. I don't know if I pronounced your last name right. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but subscribe to him. Um, I'll probably post the, I'll post the link to his Instagram in my in the description of the video. All right, but let's watch his. Boom, and we gotta mute that so we don't get copyrighted. Although, watch this get copyrighted with that three second clip. It is absolutely so good. We're talking about being above the bar, look at that, <laughs> right? He's basically, same as Alfred, he's already rotating before he's dropped below the level of the bar. He's already made up the deficit because um, you're starting from a quarter flip deficit. He's already made up that deficit and he's at that perfect distance. Now, the one thing, because let's go back and let's talk about that back angle, right? You'll notice his back angle is a lot more than Alfred's. He's going a lot further this way than Alfred was. Now, clearly that's not an issue because he has such a friggin' powerful snap, right? If you're like that, the one thing, Riker has really down, and the reason he's so good at bars is that shape change, that snap, that arch hollow, right? So you'll notice how powerful that is. So even though he's, yeah, and so you'll know he's slightly lower than Alfred was just because of that difference and he's slightly farther because of that back angle. Um, but honestly, there's not much you could do better, Riker, besides just try to slightly lessen that angle away from the bar. Not by much though, because I mean, the fact that you can do it that well with that much distance is awesome. I mean, that's like as safe as it gets and safe is good um, with head danger moves. But if you were trying to improve it at all, I'd just say practice that set, getting your back to go slightly more, oh God, I have to go back. Slightly more this way rather than this way as you're, yeah, slightly more this way and slightly less this way as you're setting. Other than that, I mean, that's that's pretty darn good. But this is basically how I would go about self-correcting my cast gainer as well. I'd film it and I'd think, okay, how can I maximize the shape change, which Riker's already doing. He's got a damn good shape change. Um, and then my next thought would be, okay, how can I maximize the set? How can I maximize how well I'm getting above the bar, right? And, and with cast gainer, you really don't get much. I mean, you're not gonna be flying above the bar. You're not gonna be up here unless you're Sean maybe and you're just ultra buff. Um, so better to work on maximizing the the cast shape, which is why I said most people should learn this by starting by learning a really good castaway. Um, set yourself up for success. Don't just try to do this. Um, but yeah, so that's cast gainer. Not as complicated as you might think, but definitely very complicated. Uh, start with a really good castaway and you're basically 75% of the way there. Uh, work the set a lot and try it in a foam pit if you can is my absolute top tip. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in the next one.